Today we're going to build this 10 foot farmhouse table with turned legs made from regular southern yellow pine that you can get at any sort of home improvement store like Lowe's or Home Depot. So just watch the video to the end and check out some different features of this table. So first off I want to say that that is not me in the picture, it's my friend Thomas who has a industrial woodworking and metalworking shop and I just quickly showed the part with him in it because again these are 10 foot boards and it was just too big and too bulky to do in my little shop so he jointed them uh, and also gave them a straight edge and then I carted them home which put my vehicle at its absolute max I actually ended up cracking the window from putting those 10 foot boards in there when I shut the trunk so normally I do my uh, base for the table first and then the top second but I wanted to show his awesome shop and, and show how I actually got those boards uh, jointed and, and flattened as best I could uh, because again it's just regular construction grade lumber I picked out the straightest ones that I could find and he got them nice and cleaned up for me so because they are so long I'm gonna go ahead and just mention that I used a bunch of dowels on this to keep it flat uh, and also to add some strength because dowels certainly do and I had just four pieces that were down to 10 inches each in width and actual 10 inches so they were initially 2x12s and um, I put them all together and first I put them in two sections and I joined them together uh, I've built a couple other tables on this channel like quite a few actually so I kind of went through it fast this time uh, the table making process is the same except for I did this table the right way no breadboard ends the wrong way um, I attached the tabletop the correct way and I have been doing that for a long time except for really just the, the first very few tables that I ever made and so uh, one thing you'll notice is when putting the stain on here I also didn't show myself sanding or scraping the glue out which I did use a paint scraper to do, the, to do that people use card scrapers or paint scrapers or different different options but I typically use a paint scraper to scrape out the dried glue if I left any um, and then I go over it with a lot of sanding now what I did there is I put a stain on that was a lighter color and the customer wanted a darker color so I did a darker color off camera now I'm going and putting some polyurethane on the table and it is a triple coat uh, clear gloss polyurethane I did put a few coats on sanding in between and I actually wiped it on with a brush. This whole video is, is sped up faster than my normal video because again I do tables quite a bit but this table had a lot of different features to it and the fact that I did it at a different shop. I had turn legs on there. Um, right there I'm cutting the aprons for the table and I also drilled dowels is how I put the entire table together. I find that dowels are a strong method to do it as long as you pin them and I always put miters in the corners just to add extra strength so they'll pull apart now I will tell you those turn legs I did not turn I do not have a lathe and even if I went out and purchased a lathe I wouldn't have the skill to make them look like that on my first several tries even so um, I go ahead I went ahead and put two dowel holes in each and I used three inch dowels that are half an inch thick I would not be able to do that without the little dowel jig that I have. So the customer actually bought those turn legs and that's just a picture of obviously different legs but that's how I do the doweling. I put two in each um, and obviously make sure everything is lined up. Now this is the base all assembled together minus the corner braces that I t mentioned that I'm going to put on there. I don't show it in the video but you will see them on there. Uh, prior to the video finishing also I put two support pieces because again this is a 10 foot table this was the biggest table that I had ever done um, and it actually I was super happy as was the customer and how it turned out so I don't use pocket holes as far as the table legs attaching them because I have used pocket holes and do use pocket holes for different things but 
attaching the actual legs to the actual aprons, I find that they tend to pull apart too easy. At least, I'm probably doing it incorrectly. But. However, I do use pocket holes to add two support pieces in here because they're just, again, keeping the table from, you know, rocking back and forth uh, because it's such a long apron frame. Uh, and there you go. You can see the mitered corner pieces that I add that are inside and underneath the table so they don't show. That just adds support. And a lot of customers go with the color that I use typically, which is China White is the color that I use for the base. I allow people obviously to choose any color. But, uh, the next thing I'm going to mention is I do get a lot of people that ask how I attach the tabletop to the base and apparently I haven't showed it in any of my previous videos so um, in this situation again I do use pocket holes um, and what I do is I usually drill just on the sides and so that way the table will be able to move and won't be prevented by the end pieces having pocket holes in them. Now I show a picture here in just a minute. I drill a pocket hole and then I take a half inch countersink bit and drill out where the actual hole is so the table will be able to expand and contract and will be able to move in that pocket hole. I do not tighten the pocket holes all the way down, just enough to hold it sturdy in there. And so that is my process for attaching tables at this point. You know, someday I may do like the buttons or you know, there's different ways, but there's not an issue with expansion and contraction. See, it looks kind of like a skeleton key um, after you do that. And anyhow, there's the finished product. It was a really fun build, and I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you next time.